So this video goes over formatted input and output. And it's important to distinguish between formatted input and unformatted input, the same way we distinguish between things like scanf, which reads formatted input from the user, so it reads, for example, numbers or single words from the user, as opposed to unformatted input, which we might use getchar for. So getchar reads single raw characters from input, and that includes a bunch of spaces if the user enters spaces or new lines, whereas scanf would skip over those things. So this video talks about formatted input and output, using the analogs of scanf and printf, fscan and fprintf. The first example is reading a file. So I open my file here in mode R. Remember that if you open the file in mode W, you're saying you want to write to it, which will automatically delete the current contents. So if you accidentally open the file in mode W, you might be in trouble. You might lose your data. If fopen fails, which it could, especially in mode R, if you ask fopen to open a file for reading, it won't create it for you if it doesn't exist. It'll just fail. It'll say, I'm sorry, I couldn't find that file. If fopen fails, it will return the value null. And we know already that null is a great value to use as a signal when you're working with pointers, that the pointer points to nothing. And so fopen, a function that returns a pointer, can therefore use null to indicate, sorry, I couldn't do the job, something went wrong. And it's important to understand that under no circumstances can you ever dereference a null pointer. You can't use something that points to null. You can test if it's null, but you should never try and follow that arrow. And so maybe it goes without saying, if fopen fails and it returns null, we can't do anything with that file. And because the point of this whole program is to work with the file, I think logically if fopen fails, if it returns the value null, we should just quit. We'll print out an error message and then we'll exit the program. And that'll be the end of that. Now suppose that fopen succeeds, so we end up down on line 24. What I want to do now is read all of the numbers stored in the file using fscanf. Uh, so here's my file. You can see it's a bunch of numbers separated by spaces or new lines. And we know already that if you use fscanf, or just if you use regular scanf, to read numbers, it'll automatically skip between any white space um, between the numbers, including things like blank lines. So that's the benefit of formatted input, is it allows me to read semantically what I need out of the file without having to worry about minutia, like how many digits are in each number or how many spaces might appear between them. And so the logic for fscanf is no different than regular scanf, uh, just like regular scanf. fscanf has a return value, which equals the number of things it read successfully. So here what I'm doing is I, I've made my double value v, and I'm just going to keep calling fscanf over and over again, asking it to read one double. You might remember from the labs that um, fscanf is a little bit different than uh, printf in terms of the format specifiers for doubles and floats. With printf, you can use percent %f for both doubles and floats, but with scanf, you have to differentiate them. That's because you have to pass in a different kind of pointer. So with fscanf, if you want to read a double, you use percent %lf, which stands for long float, I guess, but it's for a double. So I, I keep running as long as fscanf returns 1, I will then print out the value that I just read. And then when I'm done, of course, I don't forget to close that file. So I call fclose when I'm done. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll open up the data file here so we can take a look at it and make sure everything's there. And then let's compile it and we will run the program. And we'll take a look. And we can see there it is, 6, 10, 17, and the usual these three numbers, and then there's the today's date, and then there's a bunch of other junk as well. So fscanf read each value in the file, and then it put it in a variable, we printed it out, and then when we were done, we closed the file. So that's the use of fscanf for formatted input. Okay, what about formatted output? I'm actually gonna go through pretty much the same example, but in reverse, um, which is I'm going to write the same data to a file. So here uh, I will, I just made an array of data and I'm storing the number of rows and columns in variables so that uh, I can come back to them later. The idea though is that what I want to do is basically generate that data file that I just read in with the other example. So I call fopen, here I use mode w and remember in mode w the file is opened, its current contents are cleared if it already exists and if it doesn't exist a file is created and it's empty. 
Even when I'm open things for writing, fopen could fail. So if I'm opening something for reading, fopen can fail for reasons like the file doesn't exist. A pretty common issue. Um, when I'm opening for writing, it could still fail. It's a bit less likely, but it could still happen. Things like the disk is full, things like I'm not allowed to open files in the current directory. All those are possible. So of course, as usual, I need to make sure I handle this case. I need to make sure that I have some way of dealing with the maybe minute chance that fopen can't work properly. Okay, so I open the file. Uh, if I get down to line 35, the file was open, so I can write to it. And now I loop over my um, array, my 2D array of data, and I just print everything out. And I'm going to use fprintf for that. And so fprintf is no different than regular printf, except that it prints its results to a file instead of to the screen. Um, and so I'll just do a percent %d because it's an int array, and I'll just print out my, the value of my array. And then at the end of each line, I'll print a backslash n. And then, okay, when I'm done, I call f close. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Again, really, the only new part of this week is f open and f close. f scanf and f printf shouldn't be too scary. They're basically identical to the functions we've already been using, except with the letter f at the beginning of them. So we'll try compiling this. Okay, and then formatted file writing. And it generates no output to us because it doesn't contain any printf statements, uh, but it does create this file called some data. And just like I said in the last video, if the file you're expecting isn't showing up, just hammer this refresh button a couple of times and that should usually make it show up. Okay, so we'll open that. It opens in the wrong place. Uh, maybe that'll help us. We'll take a look at our array and we'll observe that all the values are there as we expected. And so that is formatted output using fprintf. Now there was one more thing it, that the, um, the, the, the code asked us to try, which is what happens if we don't close the file? So we know that this code works. It generates the output we expect. What if I forget that call to fclose? Okay, so the first thing is, um, if I try compiling that, I don't get a warning. The compiler, even though I'm sure it could detect if it wanted to that I wasn't closing my file, the compiler just doesn't care. I'm the boss. If I chose not to close the file, I guess that was deliberate, so it's not going to bother me about it. Then I'll try writing to my file, and we'll see what happens. Um, we'll open someData.txt, and in fact, this time around, everything worked just fine. And just like uninitialized memory, it's sort of hard to second guess the operating system here. In general, it's, it's important to understand that um, if you open a file and you don't close it, you have no idea what happened to that data. Even if you open the file for reading, failing to close the file could result in strange things. In the past, I've seen stuff like the file shows up blank, or just the last bit of the file is missing. And that could happen uh, based on the amount of data you've already put in, things like the number of lines in the file, a lot of other things you have no way to tell. And as a result, it is critical, even if it looks like the code is working, that you always make sure to call fclose when you are done working with a file.